Hey guys, Ace Trainer Liam here. Hope you're having a good day. Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon WTF Moments. And I'm sorry there was no video last week. We just had some terrible, terrible audio issues and the footage was completely unusable. But I'm here now. I'm here now for episode 32. So swings and roundabouts, I suppose. You still got a cheeky Call of Duty stream highlights video last week. That was fun, right? You know? Speaking of audio issues, I do just want to make you guys aware that today I'm testing my noise cancellation software to make sure that everything's okay with my new friend Barney. Barney is my air conditioning unit. He is making sure that I'm nice and cool while I record this video because I'm always complaining about the heat because UK homes are designed to absorb heat. So when it's like 25 degrees Celsius outside, which is a little bit warmer than mild, but not too unbearable. It's about 32 degrees inside my room, inside my office with the doors and windows closed to make sure the sound is the best quality it can be. So that's why I get moany that it's hot because the room that I am in is literally 32 degrees Celsius and has no aircon. Now we have aircon. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but it's a nice comfortable 23 degrees Celsius in here right now, which is not too bad at all. And it is dropping because Barney is trying to get the room down to about 17. Regardless, all that out the way. Look, go for a thousand likes on this video. Let's do that. Hit subscribe if you're new. Share this video with a friend. Let's get into the nitty gritty for Pokemon Season 1, Episode 32, The Ninja Poke Showdown. We start the episode with our heroes poking their heads out of some random bush, when it will be revealed moments later that there's literally a path right beside them. You guys have a map, just follow it. Misty tries to convince Brock to trade his Vulpix for her Psyduck, ignoring the fact that technically Brock doesn't own his Vulpix. And all this is because Psyduck happened to drink some cold water. Now I know some of you absolutely stan Misty, but God, what a garbage fucking person she really is. Venonat is watching three children from the bushes. Then and that is a predator, pass it on. Okay, firstly, what's with the Pokemon world and having all these ridiculous looking bridges that have no supports on them and are barely maintained? Secondly, direct quote from Ash. Hold on, if we fall, our Pokemon journey is over. Bearing in mind he's in front of Brock, who fell off a similar bridge in the Bulbasaur episode and turned out absolutely fine. The gang find a huge mansion in the middle of nowhere and they open one door and kind of go, hello, hello, is anyone here? And Brock instantly assumes that the place is deserted. You've checked one room in a huge mansion. Give over trying to say it's deserted when you've literally just checked one room. Someone might be in the other wing of the mansion. You don't know. You've barely been there a minute. Just admit, Brock, you're a lazy bastard and you can't be asked to look around. Misty finds a secret door by falling through it and oh, you know what that means. Things are about to get spoopy. God, I hate myself so much. Does anyone else get royally pissed off when Ash Ketchum looks at a Pokemon and just instantly yells out, What's that? This is a kid who from day one, from episode one, was itching to become a Pokemon master and to enter the Pokemon League, yet he knows bugger all about any of the most common Pokemon. After chasing Venona, Ash gets shocked by a Voltorb and says, Doesn't look friendly. I wonder what it is. Oh, this is my whole point. This kid's so useless. Would it have really been that difficult to write him to say something like, Oh, look, a Voltorb. I wonder what kind of things the Pokedex has to say about this. Direct quote from Dexter. Voltorb, the identity of this creature is is unknown. We know its identity. It's Voltorb. Ash, Misty, and Brock end up trapped behind invisible walls. And Brock worries that they may have fallen into a trap, and they hope that whoever trapped them isn't looking to steal their Pokemon. And that's because he doesn't want to lose Vulpix, but neglects to mention the Geodude, the Onix, or even the Zubat that he's had so much longer than Vulpix. Yikes, mate. Talk about favoritism. It's not even your Vulpix. Ash gets pinned to the wall by throwing stars, and at this point, I think the police need to be called. Someone's just attempted to murder a 10-year-old. Direct quote from Aya, Ninja Warrior. Born in darkness, living in darkness, such is the fate of the ninja. Oh, fuck off. Who finds this cringy shit entertaining? Plus, you're not even living in darkness. Every room in that mansion is clearly very well illuminated. After Brock hits on Aya, Ninja Warrior, and gets shot down, she proceeds to push her foot repeatedly into his face. Listen, I know Brock's a bit of a creep, but you could at least politely say no before you resort to violent humility. Aya, Ninja Warrior, claims that her Venonat informed her that three stupid looking people had entered the mansion. Now listen love, we all know that most likely you can't understand the intricate language of a Venonat, so you are literally just looking for an excuse to call the three people in front of you stupid looking. Why not just be upfront about it? You're supposed to be some badass Ninja Warrior, aren't you? In a one on 
one-on-one fight with Aya, Ninja Warrior, Ash decides to use Bulbasaur. Now that's not a great shout considering that Venonat can learn Confusion and Psybeam which will absolutely ritz Bulbasaur, but not to mention he's literally traveling with a Pidgeotto. That thing would steamroll Venonat. Venonat tries to use Stun Sport and in response Ash tells Bulbasaur to use Whirlwind. Whirlwind? On a Bulbasaur? The fuck? It's been a while but Ash is a hacker. Confirmed. Ash's OP Bulbasaur tanks a Psybeam from Venonat and then lands Leech Seed on it, at which point Aya, Ninja Warrior, returns Venonat to its Pokeball and calls off the battle. But that seems so stupid to me, because even if Leech Seed is in effect, it doesn't affect the power of your moves, so one more Psybeam and Bulbasaur would be toast. Uh oh, someone forgot to close the window or turn that little extractor fan thing on when they had a shower. Oh, well done, Dad. Oh, okay, so apparently it's not Aya, Ninja Warrior's dad, it's Aya, Ninja Warrior's brother, who reveals himself to be Koga, the master of the Fuchsia City Gym. Well then hang on a minute mate, because if this mansion is the Fuchsia City Gym, I've got a couple of bones to pick. You have a trick wall in your building that literally opens out over a cliff edge above a river. You have people throwing throwing stars at newcomers to the building, and you also have invisible walls that are not signposted so anybody could walk into them. Your gym is a health and safety nightmare. James isn't impressed by the quote famous ninja mansion because to him it looks more like a Japanese restaurant. James is a bit of a racist. Racist? Pass it on. Jessie throws a rose to James to emphasize her point about how beautiful things can also be painful because she throws the rose to him, it's got thorns, when he grabs it he's gonna get pricked by the thorns, that makes sense. But then for no reason she just throws her binoculars at his fucking cranium. What's wrong with you Jessie, you big arsehole? In a shocking turn of events, Ash actually sends out his Pidgeotto against Koga's Venonat. Although Ash chose his Pokemon first and didn't know Koga was gonna use Venonat, so really it's not that much of an informed decision, but it's still surprising to see. Upon entering the the battle, Koga's Venonat just evolves. Out of the blue. Well, actually, Liam, if this makes you mad, you're gonna have a rude awakening in later seasons, because this happens a lot. Oh, shut the fuck up. We've all seen the later seasons. We all know. Knowing every single specific intricate detail about a children's show doth not a personality make. Direct quote from Brock upon seeing Venomoth. A metamorphosis attack? Why does nobody in this show called Pokemon set in the Pokemon world know anything about Pokemon? Why is Pidgeotto pulling this face? It's because Venomoth just landed Stun Spore and then immediately went for Sleep Powder. You can't put a paralyzed Pokemon to sleep, Koga. Oh wait, apparently you can. Well, it might be that Stun Spore didn't connect with Pidgeotto, so Koga went for Sleep Powder for a follow-up attack. I mean, that's fair, but Koga didn't wait very long to see if Stun Sport actually took effect, and even then, it looked like it was pretty effective on Pidgeotto to me. But you know what's pretty effective on me? G Fuel, which you can use code ACE to save money on. Today, I'm drinking Castro's Guava. I love this flavor. Holy moly. You've heard me talk about Guava before. Love this. Super refreshing. Bung some ice in it. Put ice in your G Fuel, lads. Just do it. Just do it. Everybody put ice in their G Fuel. Lads, girls, everything in between. Put ice in your G Fuel. Use code ACE to get G Fuel, then put ice with it. Oh my lord, let's drink some guava. Oh, it's so refreshing and it gives me energy with no come down. What's not to like? Use code ACE. Wait, Ash chose a Pokemon that actually works for this situation? WTF? Charmander uses Flamethrower to nullify Stun Spore. Let's just skip over that real quick, but doesn't actually hit Venomoth with it. Why not just aim for the Moth? You'll surely hit its Stun Spore on the way to it. Eh, not Team Rocket's worst outfits, but also not the best Kabuki looks I've seen, so 4 out of 10. Direct quote from Koga. We must join forces if we are to vanquish them. Oh, who talks like that? Look, we get it. You're going for this uber traditional Japanese warrior vibe. But using words like vanquish, even in the 90s, is just so lame. James channels his inner multiple migs from Silence of the Lambs and flicks jizz at all the good guys' Pokemon, sticking them together. That's rank. Well, actually, Liam, you could have easily said he was channeling his inner Spider-Man and shooting webs at them instead of being disgusting. Yeah, I could have. But I didn't. Jesse does the same to Pikachu and then Arbok gives Pikachu a little lick. This is getting weird. Misty goes to send out Starmie, but Psyduck jumps out of its Pokeball before she can. And then Misty has a massive scranny at Psyduck for not being Starmie. Just send the starfish out as well and shut your fucking whining up. Misty tries to send out Star U instead, which makes no sense because Psyduck being out of its ball doesn't prevent you from sending out Starmie, which you're proving by sending out Star U. So why have you switched to the less evolved form? But then when Psyduck jumps into frame once again, she decides 
decides not to send out another Pokemon at all. Mate, why is Misty being such a twat in this episode? Now, I know the more pedantic among you would like me to talk about how Dexter lists Psyduck's moves in an order that is different to its actual level up order, but they don't actually say at any point that these are the moves that Psyduck learns as it levels up, and they don't even reference the levels at which it learns them. For all we know, this could just be a recommended order to use the attacks in for beginners. You know, Tail Whip to lower defense, Scratch, an actual attack, Disable to disable your opponent's big move that will be revealed by that point, and so on. It could even just be a list of the moves that this specific Psyduck knows, if the Pokedex has that feature. Koga pulls a rope that releases a bunch of Voltorb from the ceiling as a kind of security measure, but they all just sit there and do nothing. So they're a pretty lame security measure, to be honest. Meowth and Jesse both don't know what Voltorb are. Honestly, I think 32 episodes in, we've reached a point where insert character doesn't know any Pokemon outside of a very specific small number of Pokemon that they or their friends own can't be considered a WTF moment anymore. Apparently, everybody in the Pokemon world is completely oblivious to any other Pokemon outside of their friend group. One of the Voltorbs explodes, which gives Ash, Koga, and Co. a chance to run away, and they run into an angled room. And Koga explains that it's a slanted room to confuse our enemies. Mate, you're a gym leader? You're an official representative of the Pokemon League? Why are you out here making enemies? Just be professional. Ash can't seem to get James's jizz off Pikachu, so tells him to try using Electric Attack, which isn't a move. Well, actually, Liam, I think you'll find it's Jesse that threw that Pikachu. James threw his at Venonat, Venomoth, and Charmander. Okay then, Ash can't get Jesse's jizz off Pikachu. What, is that somehow better? Team Rocket turn up with all the Voltorb neatly bagged up. These Voltorb really were just crap at their job, weren't they? This Voltorb only explodes after Meowth rolls it towards Ash and Co and Koga its owner. Was it really that easy for this Voltorb to switch teams? These guys turn heel faster than Big Show. Oh look, it's that duck game from the fair, but instead of a gun, we're using a Pokeball trying to return our Pokemon. LOL. Psyduck's Disable can hit multiple opponents at once, and so can its confusion attack. Misty is a hacker. Confirmed. Psyduck's psychic powers can also melt away the seemingly indestructible jizz for no reason. I find it weird that psychic powers can get rid of it, but not like Charmander's flame or Squirtle's water, both of which they didn't try. Aya, Ninja Warrior, and Koga both offer to trade away their partner Pokemon, Venonat and Venomoth respectively, in exchange for Misty Psyduck. What kind of arsehole willingly trades away their best Pokemon at the drop of a hat? Whatever happened to Pokemon trainers and their Pokemon being the best of friends? Ash sends out Charmander for a rematch against Koga, knowing he'll have the advantage against Koga's Venomoth, which is a great tactic. Psych, he sent out Golbat. Oh, Koga, you wily old bastard. Charmander tries desperately to land Flamethrower on Golbat, but hits Brock with it instead. Christ, how low is this Charmander's accuracy? At least it only landed on one target, unlike Golbat's Screech. Bloody hackers everywhere today. Charmander batters Golbat with Fire Spin and, oh my god, Ash Ketchum has won a gym badge. Legitimately and everything. Wow, his sixth gym badge. That's now two he's won legit, as opposed to the four that he won on Technicalities. Notice how buddy-buddy the Voltorb are with Koga now, after they were so quick to just accept being stopped stolen by Team Rocket. They really are the Pokemon equivalent to Big Show. They'll flip-flop from babyface to heel to back again on a dime. So what did we really learn from today's episode? Well, we learned that Misty will be an arsehole to someone until they prove themselves useful and then suddenly she's their bestie, and that Koga is a health and safety lawsuit waiting to happen. So those are my WTF moments for Pokemon Season 1, Episode 32, The Poke Ninja Showdown. Let me know your favourites in the comments below or any that I missed. Like, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel like the beautiful people over here do, pledge my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Ace Trainer Liam and save money on G Fuel. Use code ACE, but until next time, I'm Ace Trainer Liam. Keep on training.